Here at Sagamore Hill in Oyster Bay, the historic national park that was the home of Theodore Roosevelt from 1885 until his death in 1919, 25 selected artists from around the country are competing in the 5th Annual Teaching Studios of Art Plein Air Competition. And in 2009, I opened an art school in Oyster Bay, New York, uh, devoted to teaching traditional techniques of drawing and painting. And traditional techniques go back to the Renaissance. Um, and for a long time, they were out of favor from say like 1950 to the early 90s. And in the early 90s, there was a resurgence of interest in traditional techniques. And I looked around at Long Island and I realized that one of its biggest resources was the landscape. Specifically in Oyster Bay, there's some beautiful vistas. Uh, and Sagamore Hill is the epitome of that. En plein air is a phrase borrowed from the French equivalent meaning in open air and is used to describe the act of painting outdoors. It was originally done, if you go all the way back to France, uh, in the Barbizon School in the 19th century. The Impressionists, which came after the Barbizon School, were mostly plein air painters. People are kind of teched out. We live in a very tech-savvy, very tech-oriented society, and there's something beautiful about going out with a piece of paper or a canvas with oil paint or watercolors and painting directly what you see. And I think a lot of artists respond to that. I have been here before and I love this particular competition. I, this is probably my third time, I think. All I knew was I wanted to paint something different. So it took me a while. It takes, you know, I walked around for a half hour to an hour looking around and pretty much any place you look is a good painting. So you just have to, you know, land somewhere and make a good painting out of it, if you can. <laughs> when I first initially came out here, I just looked around and there's so many beautiful things to paint. I mean, you could literally set your easel up anywhere and you know, capture beauty, but what I'm particularly looking for is how a person composes a scene and how they use different angles, how they use the light. Um, me as a, as a plein air painter, um, I'm schooled in the, uh, the American uh, tradition of painting, which includes uh, Andrew Wyeth, Winslow Homer, Thomas Aikens, and what they did was really captured uh, through their plein air painting uh, and their landscapes. They really captured the beauty of America. They're very uh, distinct things about America, whether it's the type of tree, bushes, what, no matter uh, where you look, there, there's beauty. But what I'm really looking for as a juror is uh, compo composition, use of light, and, uh, and creativity from, from an artist. And the person that does that the best uh, will walk away with the grand prize. The bridge that you can see here is actually a rebuild. After Hurricane Sandy destroyed the original, they put up this beautiful construction and you'll see a lot of artists on it. Artists flock to it because it's a transition device. You've been in deep woods and you go from interior woods where the trees close over the canopy of the sky and then all of a sudden you're in the wide open sky and the bridge takes you over a bog to a beach vista, a white sand beach, which is a totally different topography than is present in the rest of Sagamore Hill. I've walked around and people have done two and three and you know they're really practicing and getting ready and I think tomorrow really is going to be the day where they bring all that together and synthesize you know their ideas. I generally paint mountains, forests, and so this is a great break from that. We get out here, wide open spaces, everything's pretty flat so we're looking for ways to find a way to take the viewer into the deep space and all the way out the end of the picture. So. When I, when I got here, you know, it was morning time and I'm thinking about all these sailboats going out. So I thought, well, we'll take the viewer through here and put them in the sailboat there heading out the Oyster Bay. It takes a little experience to, to realize you have to sort of set your design at the beginning of a painting. So you get a whole idea, uh, you, look, you look at the scene, you take in what's exciting to you about it, and you try to jot that down and mostly stick with it. The big shapes, the way the light's hitting things, the shadow shapes, you try to catch those and pretty much stick with it because it's all gonna change in a few minutes and you'll be awfully frustrated. The light changes all the time here. And you know, well, today we've got a super sunny day, which is great, and so, you know, as Robin was saying, we sort of commit to a lighting scheme, stay with it, even as the sun changes, you got to stay with it. It's as though the sun starts raking in really low like it is right now. I was kind of uh, looking forward to this lighting, and so I've sort of uh, been putting in the, that golden light that's coming across the bay and sort of lighting up those grasses and casting the foreground into the shadow a little bit. So I really like that effect, and that's what I'm trying to get. As an artist, I love 
painting a figure and I love going out painting landscape and I know how hard it is. I know that it's really difficult. Getting it right on any given day is a real hit or miss proposition if you're good. On any given day you can strike gold. So it's always great to see what happens. You can see a tree in a certain light and just get it. This is the winning image by Tony Winters in this year's competition. For Push Paws in Oyster Bay, this is Greg Blank.